One of the biggest eBay skills is understanding the functions of eBay and how to do things that will save you time and surely save you money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about some of the things you can do to automate and change settings. And we're going to show you how to speed things up as well. Ways that will save you time and money. We're going to hop over the screen and we're going to show you how to do some things that you may not have seen before. So we're in the hub. Now, a lot of these require the hub and that may require you to have a store. You can get a basic store for $5 a month if you pay a year in advance. 60 bucks for a whole year to have a basic store. It's up to you. There may be other ways to get the hub. I cannot say I have not delved into that aspect of it. I have had the hub since the hub has existed and used any of the features I can to help my business. So we're going to look at a few of them here. Obviously, everybody should know that you can highlight and select specific listings, and then you can edit those that you select, and you can go through, say, 2,000 listings at a time. It used to be 500. It used to be even less before that. So for me, I can click this and edit 2,000 listings however I want. I can scroll down through them. I can edit prices or select different ones in there from the details on the edit page. Now, I've showed the edits and what you can do with that before. Watch one of my other videos on that, and you can see how to pretty much do anything in the edit option. If you want to refresh a listing, your best bet without losing anything to it would be to go into your edit option, edit a bunch of your listings up $1.00 and it will change the price, recategorize where your listings are because you changed one of the main three things that tie your listing together. Again, the photo, the title, and the price. You change one of them, it's going to have to re-rank you based on one of those factors. So if you ever want to refresh them, that's what I do. I don't do sell similar or anything like that. I don't waste my time at all. Now, another thing that some people may not realize, if you slide all the way down to the bottom of your item page here in your listing section, you can change how many items will show up on this page. I set it to the max 200 because I have a lot of listings. It's a lot easier to go through 200 or do anything with 200. Now, one side draw to this, you can't set it specific for the list page or for another page. It automatically sets, I think, all of the pages to 200 items per page. There's no specifics on that. So you can see I literally have 200 items I can scroll through. I could have dropped it down to 50, 25, or whatever I want. So if you don't have that many listings and you want to do something with them, you can lower that down if that's what you'd want. Or if you only want to look at 25 at a time, it's an added plus to it. Now, you can sort through all of your listings. Again, I've got 128 pages with 200 items on it. I can just type in a page number and click Go and go to that page. And something I might do would be trying to track down when something was listed. Again, I've got stuff that's been up for years across all of our sites. So I might have to search it a different way than somebody else's. I can sort it from newest listed to oldest listed, but in that range of 20, 25, 26,000 listings, I would have to figure out where it's at. So that's a feature I use a lot too. Now your page, even if you have the hub, may not look like this as well because I can go to the customize tab right here as you see it and it's going to open up something else and I can add into it anything that you see that is not checked with the blue check. The blue checks are what I have chosen. So if you want to change or add something else into here, you can easily do that all you want. You can add all kinds of different things into here. So just FYI, and if you don't want something or you want it to revert back to the default, you have restore defaults. Anyway, that's another thing you can do if you didn't know that. Another thing a lot of people aren't aware of is you can extend the columns to make them bigger so you can see something or get more information. I only need certain amounts of information. Watchers usually doesn't go over double digits, so I can shrink that column down. You can do that to any column, but obviously you definitely want the title so you can see what you're looking at. You definitely want the images and stuff like that. Some of these are mandatory as well. I do believe you can uh, get rid of the item ID and get this a little smaller. But again, I just do it this way. This is the way I've done it for quite some time. I've crunched it all down. Uh, another thing that I would recommend is automated preferences. And we're going to open that up. I'll just open it up in another tab here. 
And automated preferences allow you to do some things without ever having to physically do them yourself. Now, people ask, when do you leave feedback? I literally let eBay leave it by my settings in this section right here. Automated positive feedback for buyers. So I have it so a buyer has paid for this item. As soon as the buyer pays for an item, eBay is going to leave the feedback that I want for that person. I'm fine with that. I don't worry if they leave feedback or whatever the case may be. I leave it first because as far as a store or a business is concerned, the minute they paid for the item, their duty is done with what they are doing. So that's the way I always do it. One other thing you can do, you can pick your own comments that it's going to leave. And you can see them right here. I just set them all the same. I don't want anybody to be thought of as I'm leaving different feedback for one person versus another. I set them the same. Now, why would I do it this way? I've seen where this feedback, if you don't fill in all the spaces, will leave a blank feedback for people. I can show you examples. I have seen it personally happen in my store. So I always recommend filling this section up. Again, you can put multiple different ones in here, but I just don't worry about it. You can change these to your heart's content any day of the week you want. But this is what I said I leave for everybody no matter what. It's always the same. I never look at this. It just does its thing and I'm done. So that's one thing that you can do all the time. I would recommend that. Set it up how you want it though. But that's what I would honestly recommend. And as you see here, randomly apply my store comments to each buyer. So it will just pick. You can pick 10, whatever there are there. You can pick that many different ones, and it will just randomly put one on there. So it doesn't look like you leave all the same one. But again, I just like to be flat the same all the way across. No one can say it's different or I left somebody this or somebody that. It's, it's just easier in my book. Um, now, you can also manage communications with buyers and things like that. These are, in fact, let's open them up and just show you real quick. These are things that you can send out from your store if you're unaware of that. Buyer wins auction. Buyer checks out. You can get a notice for that. If your buyer hasn't paid after a couple of days, you can set that up as well. It's reminders and stuff like that. Order is updated with shipping information. So if you're buying or a buyer is buying, they'll get a notice that says, hey, this item was shipped or marked for shipment or a label was created or whatever the case may be. You can do some other things to this and actually add a message to some of these as well. As you see here for like your order is shipped, like a thank you, hey, it's on its way. Whatever you want to do, you can do that. You can also edit an invoice specifically and add some details on it as well. Now here's another section here. This is where you would block somebody from getting your phone number and being able to share it. So that's something that I have done. I have blocked my phone number so people aren't just randomly going to be able to get it by requesting it or anything like that. You can include a message at checkout when they pay, which is something that I have done. You can send a, a message on eBay while they're shopping and things like that as well, too. So there's a bunch of different options on here. Now, there is also a store's email marketing option here. I'm not going to go into this one here today because there's some things you should know about that. And I might go into that in a specific video on some marketing ploys and things that are allowed to be done on eBay. Some things can't be done. Now, this is mostly for people who are obviously following you as a seller. Those are the ones that you can send most of this stuff to almost exclusively. So you got to be careful with some of that. Um, but that's the basics on the automation here. The only other thing people ask me all the time, how do I stop it from auto relisting my items? Again, we got here from the hub, we hit the automation preferences tab, which you can still see highlighted here. I can suspend my items from automatically being relisted when they end after 30 days. So if you're gonna go out of town and you know what ahead of time and you know what your cutoff date is for your listings, you could technically end them if that would be your case. You can also set them up some new listings. Let's say I change something and I, I want it to continue with new items I add. So I change it to spend relists. If I create a new one, I just hit this one, copy my automation rules during relist or sell similar. So if I accidentally hit sell similar and forget about that option, it will automatically bring those options up and it will stop the auto relist on my listings as well. Now, another one is listing templates, and most people should understand what that is. You can just make a template, fill out an entire form. So when you want to list something, you just click on that template, name it how you want, and it'll have everything already set up. You just change a few things to it. One other thing that I do use, though, is business policies. Now, I have one standard return policy for every single one of my listings. I have one standard payment policy as well for all of my listings also. 
And then I break them down into different categories based on weight and what they are and what I can and can't send. Now, most adult magazines were removed by eBay, obviously, when it went into the managed payments. But there are a few items that I can still sell on eBay that I don't want to ship overseas. So I just left this same category there. I have four whole items out of, what, close to 26,000 items that I have free shipping on. So if that gives you any idea. Now, why would you want to use these business policies. If something changes on eBay and you don't have a business policy set up, you could have to go in and manually change or go through edits left and right to edit those back to where they should be if eBay changes something. If I want to change anything on here, it's just a matter of clicking a button. If I want to change my return policy to meet some new standard or something, I can change them all with a click of two or three buttons, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and be totally done with changing any of the policies. Same thing with payment policy or any of these other ones. So when I'm listing something, I just look at what the item is and then I select the actual shipping policy that I want for it. The only differences I have are in shipping policies. I have one set to default because this store, most of the items go into that section there. I obviously have a bunch of media items as well. Obviously, it depends on what kind of store you have and what you have and need to have for a setting here. I just do all the same return policy. I have a 30-day free return. Payment policy is the same thing. I do not require immediate payment on anything, nor have I ever had an issue with not forcing somebody to pay. For me, it's an added plus. People know they're not going to be pushed to get the money in right away. So if they want to wait to the end of the week or they want to buy something else from me, they can just pay later on. I don't really care at all. If they don't pay, I just open up a case for non-payment of those listings. It closes, I get my money back, and I just relist the item. No big deal in my book. If they're not going to pay, you can't really be mad. The item would have been up. You don't know if it would have sold either way. So again, I'm not really worried about any of those little petty things in my book. So this is business policies. You can examine this how you wish. Now for like return policies, if it's something going overseas, my return policy says that the, in fact, let's show you one item here. Let's show you my first class just to give you an idea on this policy. Now with this policy, anything 16 ounces or less, you can name it as you want. You can put a description there as you want. U.S. shipping calculated the whole works. Um, then I've got some selections for how I want the international side to work as well. I do do global shipping on here, and I have excluded quite a few people or quite a few countries that I just don't ship directly to. If I don't go directly to them, they would be handled through the global shipping program also. So just FYI, you can set this up however you want as well. So there's no big deal on the setting up on any of this kind of stuff here. Now let's just look at one more thing. Let's look at my return policy for just a second here. I get questions on return policy. So I do accept returns. Now if it's from the U.S., anybody in the U.S. has 30 days to send the item back, and I pay for the return shipping. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going to reimburse them for the initial shipment to them for the item. That is not mentioned nor included, nor does it have to be included either. So you'd only be out the original shipping fee and that's it doing it this way. You can also stipulate whether you want replacement or exchange. You can do a separate return policy and set it up totally different than this as well. Now, international returns I do accept for 30 days also, but the buyer has to pay it. So you can set it up so you don't have to worry about the higher cost for international return shipments like that. So that's the basics on this. You can set them up however you want. Any which way that you wish to set them up can easily be set up through that way too. So. Let's uh, look at something else here. Now, this is the main page here for account settings, and it has all kinds of settings. If there's a setting on eBay, this is where the majority of them will be saved. Now, there are a few other ones, as you saw, like the business policies and things like that, but most of those you can still get to from here. Here it is right here as well. So one of the biggest ones is site preferences, and I have already opened up site preferences. 
And here is site preferences. Now, I get asked a lot of questions on why something doesn't show up in the sold listings, even though you say it was sold. And in here, you have an out of stock option. If I click yes on the out of stock option, that means that everything that has sold will not end. It will just go to a zero. So they will not show up in ended listings. If I want to completely remove them so no one can see what those items ever sold for, I would keep them as zero quantity and then completely delete them from my store. Once deleted, they would never show up as sold, so they wouldn't show up in the sold items category. So hence, no one can see them. This was an option I had set up when I was doing Ink Frog and doesn't necessarily have to do with trying to hide them. If you go with third-party applications, many of them cannot touch or end an item. They can only go down to zero on a quantity. Hence, that is why out of stock option you will see on many stores that do like third party, like Shopify, Ink Frog, Cellbrite, or any of that kind of stuff has the basic same principle that you have to set it up this way. Not everyone, but many of them do. Um, you can include a custom description footer and all sorts of different things. Um, list on uh, these world uh, eBay sites, US. That's the only one I want to list on. You can change this. They've got options to list, I think, on six other sites. I don't mess with those. I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. This one here is for confirmation when you're doing things, deleting, changing, or doing anything like that. You can turn off some of those warnings that say you're about to delete, you're about to do this, you're about to do that. You can turn some of those off so you don't have to worry about clicking another button. If you didn't know that and you hate clicking those extra buttons, just go in here and edit it. You can do all kinds of things. You can add display for international sale notes. So when you're selling something, it'll highlight and say, hey, this is an international sale. So you can always tell the difference. Email templates, again, we've talked about that's the same basic thing as we already showed you. Now, they used to offer you the option to do IMCC charges and things like that. That's basically just a private charge card, direct charge. All that's gone with managed payments. I do use a sales tax table. Anybody who's selling as a business should use a sales tax table if it's not set up for you already. Um, I do not do the guaranteed delivery because, again, if I was doing that now, most of the packages aren't showing up on time or many aren't. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it off. Don't care. I've never had an issue by doing it that way either. Um, some of these have been moved. I don't know why they haven't updated this, but we've got several that have been moved. Logos on emails and things like that. I don't mess with that. And again, that goes to marketing as well. I have shown this before, so I'm not going to go into buyer requirements. You can set up things like people having zero and no feedback or item strikes because they didn't pay and all kinds of other things. You can do all that sort of thing. And you can actually come into the buyer requirements activity log. In fact, we'll open this part of it just so you can see. I don't have any at this time. So that means that none of my buyer requirements that I require every buyer to do um, affected anybody. Nobody bid with any of these requirements. I have received two unpaid item strikes within one month. Basically, anybody who receives that can't bid on one of my items. Has a primary address outside of locations I don't ship to has a feedback score of negative one or below, which is honestly a thing people buy and sell. Just because you think that they're buying from you doesn't mean that they didn't sell. If they sold and did something bad, they could have a negative one, two, three, four, five. So that's why that comes into play. Again, manage communications with buyers. You can set that up as well. You can also set it up so it automates the unpaid item assistance. So it automates things that aren't paid for. Now, I don't do that because if I did, I would have people that are paying at the end of the month dinged with stuff like that. And I'm not interested in that. I don't care if they pay right away. Most people contact me ahead of time and I don't have to worry about that in the first place. You can share contact details with uh, nonprofits. I, again, I don't do much of that. VATS and stuff like that. Again, I don't worry about much of that. You can set up how you uh, do return preferences. Again, I have a return policy which covers all of that as well. You can do uh, hide reviews or all kinds of other things like that. This basically means no one can see certain things of you. You can also come in here and remove certain aspects. This is your third party authorization. The only one I currently have now and still use is Hip Comics. Um, it's one of the Hip platform ones as well. I did deactivate all of my uh, Ink Frog and the whole works um, from my connections here. So just FYI on that one. 
Now, you've got buyer alerts as well on your pages and stuff like that. Shows buying alerts on pages and things like that before the end in a certain length of time. I don't buy from this account here personally very much, so I don't mess with most of that. Invoice formats you can set up ahead of time as well. So if there's a specific one you want to use for your invoices, you can set it up here. I use detailed HTML format for most. I also have a automatically generated CSV file. So at the end of every month, uh, it creates these files for me, a CSV file and an inform me. I'm not sure what the inform me is, but I use a CSV. A CSV is an Excel spreadsheet, basically. You can set up how you apply your recent payments and such forth as well. Apply only recent payments to automatic payment amount, all kinds of other things. There are a couple of general ones you can keep yourself signed in. Sign me in automatically to the community discussion board. Now, all of these are key things that I would recommend everybody going through and understanding how they work. This is the majority of what you need to know. As long as you know this and you can pay some attention to this, you shouldn't have any issue going forward with being able to automate these, fix things, simplify things, and being able to change and address them with just a few clicks once you know they are all in a certain spot. Now let's just talk about one more for your personal information safety. There's one called permissions up here under account preferences. I would recommend everybody personally checking on that. Now this is a big one for me. You'll have to go over here to advertisement preferences here. Now this is for vendors that use some of the information on here. So if a vendor wants to use information of your browsing history to display specific ads to you, you allow them to do that automatically. If you want to turn that all off so they can't see what you're looking at, they can't use that data to help judge what they want to push, you just turn all of these off here. I've turned off all these. I don't really care what kind of ad eBay displays to me. I'm not going to do anything with any of the ads on the page in the first place. I don't click on ads. I know they're ads. I don't mess with them. I don't care. If I want something, I'll look for that specific item. Ads don't steer me anywhere, I promise you. It's just not worth the issue. This basically, if you had yes, as I said, on any of these, means that the vendor, one of the ad people, the people paying for ads to display on eBay, has permission to use your information. So click no on all these if you don't want the folks to know what you're looking at. I don't think a third-party person should have those abilities to see what I'm looking at to judge on what they want to market towards me. So I've turned these all off. Just FYI, that's up to you on what you want to do with this, but I turned them all off. I've had them off that way for a while. So hopefully this is a little eye-opener for those folks who don't know about some of these settings. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Switching containers, putting expensive items into cartons formerly containing inexpensive items is a popular trick. An alert cashier will notice all tears and broken seals. It's easy to slip items under her knitting. Beware of customers bringing bags, boxes, or any large container into your store. No, these slacks weren't exactly what she wanted. The green ones are. Use the check system. Make sure everything is returned. This woman gambles that a bag from another store will not be searched. It's better for the purse to be too large than too small. Wearing a rain cape on a sunny day should arouse your interest. Some shoplifters don't always hide their thefts. They merely exchange their old for your new. Here's a happy customer, happy that the clerk wasn't alert.
didn't check inside the cooler. Unpackaged clothing should always be checked. One clerk didn't take the time. Switching pinned on tags and tied tags gets this shopper a $25 coat for $13. Knowing your merchandise will curb this theft technique. With the aid of this clever booster box, only two seconds are needed to steal an expensive camera. Here is another type of booster box. It's carried by the shoplifter for the convenience of his companion. Not all packages are what they seem to be. 